国連環境計画ユネップ事務局長インガー・アンダーセン様よりビデオメッセージをいただいておりますのでご紹介させていただきます。Thank you for inviting me to say a few words at this symposium. We at UNEP stand in solidarity and sympathy with the people and the government of Japan as together we tackle this dreadful COVID 19 pandemic. But as we act to stem the tide of this devastating virus, we do so with the knowledge that the global pandemic is not the only crisis facing our world. We face three planetary crises the climate crisis, the biodiversity and nature crisis, and the pollution and waste crisis. These crises are putting us at risk of irreversibly changing our relationship with the natural world and thereby increasing the risk of zoonotic diseases such as COVID 19. Take climate change, for example. As UNEP's recent report on zoonotic diseases reminded us, many zoonoses are climate sensitive and a number of them will thrive in warmer, wetter w o r l d that world that is projected in future climate change scenarios. And as we know already, almost half of the world's population is affected by the pathogens that are found in water. So, as we chip away at the web of life, as we reduce species diversity, as we pollute our lands, our seas, and our air, we increase our exposure to zoonoses, that, to those very diseases that impact human health and well being. As the UN Secretary General has pointed out, we need to make peace with nature. But much of our success. Will depend on bold, ambitious, and urgent actions that unite people and different approaches to understand the interconnections between and amongst these planetary crises. A One Health approach is an important tool in the solution toolkit because it is founded on the reality that human, animal, and planetary health are interconnected and interdependent. So, One Health, however, requires much more and a much greater push than what we have demonstrated so far. And so I come to you with four ways that we need to work together towards achieving the One Health agenda. First, we need to expand the environmental and ecological dimensions. Of sustainable development, integrating aspects like microbial resistance, aspects like food safety and security, environmental contaminations, and other health threats shared by people, by animals, and by the environment. Secondly, we need to collaborate across sectors. Towards this end, I'm pleased to report that UNEP has recently、uh, deepened our collaboration with WHO, FAO, and the OIE, the World Animal Health Organization, through the existing Tripartite Alliance on One Health. Our aim is simply to strengthen the environmental dimensions of the One Health work. Thirdly, we need to repair our relationship with nature. Working with nature, not against it. And here, Japan's recent expansion of the Satoyama Initiative, announced at the UN Biodiversity Summit last year, is a shining example of efforts to enable sustainable use of biodiversity in production landscapes. And fourthly, and finally, but not the very least, we must seize this opportunity to use the post 2020 biodiversity framework to ensure that those sectors that have the heaviest biodiversity footprint are aligned with a sustainable future that protects biodiversity. That is what we seek for the post 2020 framework. So I thank you very much for your leadership in this vital area. At the end of the day, the One Health is amongst our most powerful strategies to build that future that we all want, where good health, where nature, and where our well being thrive in equal measure. 
So I look forward to hearing about the outcomes of this important event, and I thank you very much for this opportunity. アンダーセン様ありがとうございました